race through it, puts it to the pocket, out of bounds on the full. The only thing he couldn't do. Everything's got to go right for the Kangaroos from here. Gets to the back. It finds its way to Higgins. Handball into the centre. Luke McDonald. Ahern. Now Big Goldie. Back to Higgins. I'm not sure it was the right option. Higgins runs onto it. Over the top to Benny Brown. He'll get closed down. He gets a foot to it. The goal's going to be kicked by Zeebel and the Kangaroos at the front with 20 seconds left. Wow. And the Kangaroos who bring the fairy tale story of 2018. They come up with a massive result. 40 seconds to go and JB says everything has to go right now for the Kangaroos. And Jack Zeebel, it did. It did. It definitely did. Um, there's probably a lot that goes wrong in that situation more often than not, but it was nice to get the rub of the green last night and, and come off with a win. After all that passage of play with the ball bouncing, it has to settle perfectly for Benny Brown to get the outside of the boot your way. I think he's been watching a bit of the World Cup, Brown. <laughs> he, um, that ball could have gone anywhere off his toe and just so happened to land in my hands. Uh, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why everything had to go right and that's one of the ones that did go right. Have you ever kicked a goal after the siren to win a match? No, that's just probably as close as I've, I've gone to doing that. So it was a, it was a nice feeling, but it was, I must admit it was nice to kick it from three metres out rather than 45 on a tight <laughs> angle to, to, to win the game. After you put it through, the favourite thing of the night for me was seeing Brad Scott just going <laughs> ballistic on the phone. All the coaches trying to set up, they go, there's a crazy guy on the end of the phone. What do I do? It just sends normal people mad. It does. We were just talking about that before, about how senior coaches, um, before they're senior coaches, are quite nice guys and <laughs> very sane and not normal. Um, but as you say, I think both coaches last night had yeah. stressful moments throughout the game and that's what senior coaching in AFL does to you. Righto, Adam, take us uh, to last night. You said earlier it wasn't a great first half, but it was some sort of a finish. No, it wasn't a great first half, but uh, the second half came to life. Josh Dunkley spotted up Billy Gowers. That was about the only highlight of the first quarter. The Dogs are up by six at quarter time. It was a pretty tight contest. Dogs were getting repeat inside 50s in the second quarter. Two goals in 30 seconds sparked the Dogs into life after a minor fracas. So it was a pretty good half. Dogs went in by 18 at half time. Third quarter is when Sean Higgins and ben, ben Cunnington came to life. They dominated inside 50s, kicked five goals two. Sean Higgins was being tagged by Josh Dunkley and had a terrific second half. He was probably the best player on the ground. The last quarter was an absolute epic. You see here, Billy Gowers kicks his third to put the Dogs in front. Two minutes, 14 to go, and then Unfortunately, Mitch Wallace, uh, hopefully he's not watching this morning because we've showed him kicking it out on the fall about five times. So sorry for that, Mitch. And uh, Jack Zeeble, just the icing on the cake there with the Joe the Goose, just not working hard. <laughs> just popped up in the goal square there. The three things I learnt, brilliant Billy Gowers. He was terrific for the Dogs last night. 22 disposals, 12 marks and three goals. The second thing, Ben Brown's boot breaks Bulldogs' hearts. He was tremendous last night. Five goals in that World Cup special to Jack Zebel And three, Sean Higgins, he's my Brownlow Smokey. He's firming as each week goes by. I think he's in all-Australian form at the moment. We mentioned Josh Dunkley tried to tag him, but he was just too good on the night. Jack, tell us about Sean. I played a bit of footy with him. Uh, a few injuries at the Bulldogs, but seems to be uh, in peak condition at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, Coons, you could probably attest to the, professional, the professionalism Sean has and, and what he's done in his career to get through those injuries. And I think at the minute he's 30 years old in career best form. And that is a testament to his preparation. Um, we're pretty happy to get him across from the Bulldogs four or five years ago. And um, his form this year has been first class. And I think if he's not in the All-Australian team now, then he probably never will be. Yeah, and and we, all, we all know him for his class and his brill, uh, brilliance. But you saw last night that gut run. He said after the game, he, he feels like someone in his mid, mid-20s, his body. And in particular, late. We, we see him here. He's really sharp with his hands, but so late in the game where there's so much on the line. You look you look at how hard he works here. Crozier's, he's a quick player, he's a fit player, but he just can't keep up. So he's he's not just all class, his leadership through his work rate here is amazing. Yeah, it's huge. His work rate for us is one of the main reasons why he's so important. Um, but another thing that's probably underestimated about Sean's game is his, his ability to win the ball on the inside. Um, I think that's probably his best position, which he's been playing for us this year, which is inside midfielder. And he probably been starved of that opportunity at the Western Bulldogs and, and to an extent when he first came to North he played as a mid forward and um, on the wings and stuff so it's great to see him the last two years go inside and have a huge impact and I think this year with his form um, we can all see why he's such a great player. Now we're talking about Benny Brown's toe poke. Um, it's been showed five or six times so I hope <laughs> he's watching um, but it just must be great playing with him. Um, I have the task of usually manning him 
uh, when we play the, the Kangaroos. But it's just fantastic to be able to see him play and um, it just must be great playing next to him. It's awesome. I mean, Benny had a bit of a different story to get into the AFL. Um, drafted as a 21-year-old out of Werribee after an ACL in his draft year, I think it was. So for him to come in and take the number one um, forward role after Drew Petrie left a couple of years ago, um, he's gone from strength to strength. and. He's a, he's a very big guy and at 200 centimetres when he puts his arms up, and Jake, you would know, it's pretty hard to spoil and defend when he hits up. So um, for us this year, he's been huge and, and we'll look to hopefully support him and, and hope for a big second half of the year out of him as well. Just having a look at that toe poke to you, did you give any consideration at all to giving it off to Sean Atley? I didn't say no. <laughs> Thank you. Just plank goal time. Yeah. Perfect answer. You've moved forward this year after spending the majority of your career in the midfield. Uh, whose idea was that? Seems to be working pretty well. Yeah, no, it was um, probably the coach's idea. I've been big on playing where you get told to play, the co where the coach tells you to play. And um, being able to have an impact and stay forward this year has probably helped us structurally. Um, but the emergence of a few guys throughout midfield um, with Jai Simpkin and Trent DeMont, I mean, having Ben Jacobs back um, has been huge. Paul Hearn coming in. Um, and there's a few other guys. Obviously, Jed Anderson's having a great year as well. Um, that midfield depth has allowed me to stay forward a little bit more and, and, and hopefully I can kick a little bit straighter than I have been doing the first half of the year and kick a few more goals. Um, we've got a bit of a holiday house about an hour out of Albury, Wodonga, uh, a place called Mitamita. Yeah. Um, so right up in the high country and we like to get up there and do some trout fishing okay. um, in some little streams. And it's near a lake called Dartmouth as well, Lake Dartmouth. Yeah, right. Uh, extraordinary week for you. Last night, the dogs lose at home. During the week, your lost dog comes home. Unbelievable story. It's been a good week. Yeah, it's been a great week. Explain um, what, what has happened for those that aren't up to date with this story. So Flash was taken from my parents' farm four months ago. Uh, we were on a community camp after playing our first pre-season game against the Dees. And um, we were away for a week, so I sent him up to the farm to have a bit of a holiday. Yep. Um, anyway, he went for a bit of a wander one day into the main highway and, and a couple of guys picked him up. So he was stolen that day and we hadn't heard anything at all. Someone st saw the guys taking the dog. Yeah, our that. postie at the time yep. was following our dog, walked down our... I'd say it's a kilometre long driveway yep. on the farm and stopped at the highway. A couple of guys in high vis, tradie looking guys in a ute, picked the dog up. Yep. And the postie just asked, What are you going to do with him? They just said, Oh, we'll take him into town to the vet and give the number on the, the name tag a call, which was my number. But we didn't hear a thing and um, no one, any vets or pounds around town heard anything. And um, we got a call this week from a lady in Geelong saying, I think I've got your dog. Um, and a long story short is that, that the lady was um, given the dog as a present. And uh, once she realised it was stolen, um, she felt really, really, really bad and uh, gave us a call and handed him back over. So she, she, was, back. <laughs> she was given the dog by one of the guys that had picked up the dog. I think so, but at the end of the day, who knows? Yeah, who really okay. cares? When the, when the dog's home now, he's been there for two or three days and hasn't left my side, so it's good to have him back. It's unbelievable.